Senegal became legally independent on April 4, 1960, as a member of the Mali Federation. This federation was the single political union created of the 18 former French states in Western Africa. But the Mali Federation, named after the ancient empire, fell only four and a half months after its creation. Senegal succeeded on August 29, 1960, a move which gave birth to two independent states, Senegal and Mali. Leopold Senghor came to power during the crisis. He would lead the country until 1980, when he turned over his position to Abdul Diouf. During the 1988 elections, the country was riddled with strikes and violent outbreaks from the younger generation. Thankfully, calm has once again settled over the country. The traditional market of Dakar is rich in color and activity. Here one can find some of the most beautiful Senegalese objects that are made, such as the tam-tam, the basic instrument of African music. Among the most interesting local products are hand-painted materials. These locally made pieces are known as lagos. Their original designs are printed in bright colors. African masks are another popular item. Though the masks are made today to satisfy the ever-growing tourist industry, they still represent an important symbol for the inhabitants of this country. This is the case of Senegal's oldest religion, animism. This ancient religion embraces the belief that all things found on earth have a soul and certain powers which are represented by these masks. Accordingly, it's believed that trees, animals and even rocks harbor their own spiritual force. Animism as a religion no longer exists for the most part, but Africa's ancestral beliefs are not far from the people's minds and hearts. In the Kaolak region, for example, lizards are believed to be gods, and the inhabitants of this area would never think of harming one. Even if today the healer's medicines, prayers and magical practices seem somewhat old-fashioned, certain ceremonies are still performed by the more isolated tribes. These ceremonies are meant to help the people. For example, an exorcism may be performed to rid a mentally ill patient of the devil which has taken over his body. Beyond Dakar's mosque, the Medina lies in the northwest part of the city. This neighborhood of prefabricated white houses was developed in the 1920s for the survivors of a plague epidemic. Busy shops and street merchants make this area a busy place. The ancient art of grinding millet can also be seen here. As in centuries past, it remains to this day a woman's job. Millet, along with rice and fish, comprise the basic diet of the Senegalese. Rice is gradually taking the place which millet once held, as the latter requires hours of preparation and cooking. Senegal's Pink Lake is one of this country's natural curiosities. Located 60 kilometers north of Dakar, this small lake turns a pinkish color in daylight. On cloudy days, the water appears gray. Its variation in color is due to a kind of algae which lives in the lake's salty water. It's the diffraction of the sunlight which gives this lake its pinkish glow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Seeing the men walk across the middle of the lake is an astonishing sight. The extreme salinity of this lake makes it unique. The men actually walk on a crust of salt which is formed approximately one meter below the lake surface. The crust is the result of the large quantity of salt which remains and solidifies after the water evaporates.